Hello, welcome back. I'm Andreas Chat, your tech curious web designer. In this video, we add notification alerts to the site to notify users if they have a new message in their inbox. There are many different approaches we can take here, so let's get first an overview of which approach might be the best for our particular use case. So a solution would be using Django channels. So with every page load, you would open a channel between the backend and the browser and can send data back and forth in real time. The cons of this solution are that it is probably an overkill of what we want to achieve here. It is more complex to set up as it requires an asynchronous server. It also demands additional processing resources and places a heavier load on the server, which can cost you more in the end. This is not the approach I will take in this video, however I will make a future video series on how to create a chat feature using channels and websockets, so stay tuned for that. The second approach is to use a context processor. This is basically data we send with each request and this data is available globally. Context processors are added in the settings.py file and include for example the variable for the request object or the user object. This solution is however not real time. The data is only available on page load. Also we would need to change the settings file which ideally should only be used for the most critical configurations. Another solution would be using template tags. We have used this approach already with our sidebar. We can load in data to our templates easily this way. They require a bit of a setup though and again this approach is not real time. Then we have of course also htmx as a solution, where we can trigger a request to the backend when the page loads. This would be very simple to implement, but again it is not real time and the data is only available when the page refreshes. We could however trigger a request every 5 seconds, for instance. So we would get updates periodically from the backend. In this way we don't need to refresh the page anymore, however this would increase the server load. Now these are just a handful of approaches. There are many other solutions available also using third party libraries and plugins. However, my preferred approach is always to achieve the main goal with the simplest solution. So I will go with the HTMX approach on page load. Let's carry on now where we left off in the last video. So to see notifications, I want to add a little blue dot to the user's avatar in the left panel here. So let's go to myconversations.html file. And here I add this little icon. So first I add a container with the class absolute. So I can position it on top of the avatar image. And now in here I add this icon. And to display a dot we can just use Tailwind CSS classes. Rounded dash full background color of blue, so bg-blue-500, so with 500 shading, and I give it a padding, p-1.5. Alright, save this file, let's check it out, I refresh the page. Now I would like to move the dot to the top right and give it a bit of a border. So I can add in here, top dash 3, left dash 11, that will move it to the right position. Then I also will give it a border of 2 and a border color of gray with 100 shading. With this declaration here I can target the child in this container, so the dot icon in our case. Alright, save this file, let's check it out. I refresh, the dot moved to the right location and has a white border. Great! 
And now I will add the HTMX, which will be triggered every time the page loads and in the backend will call a function to figure out if we should show the icon or not. So in this element we can add the HTMX, we add the get attribute, the name of the path will be notify-new message and we supply the ID of the conversation. Then we have the hx trigger, so the htmx will trigger when this element is loaded. Then we have the target, which is this element. And we swap the inner html. Alright. So let's move the icon to a separate file, let's cut it out from here. And create a file and I call it notify underscore icon dot html. Okay, save this file. Now let's create a path. It is taking in the conversation ID and we have here the function. Okay, save this file and let's create this function now. In views.py We add this function here, it's taking in the conversation ID. So let's get first this conversation. Then we get the latest message. Which is basically the first one in the list in our database because we ordered it from the most recent to the oldest. And now we add a condition to check if firstly the conversation was seen by everyone and also if the sender of the latest message is the logged in user. So if both of those conditions are false we show the notification icon. So if conversation dot is seen is false and the latest message dot sender is not the logged in user then we show the icon. So we send the snippet with the icon back and htmx will swap it in. Then we have else. So if everyone has seen the latest message or the logged in user is the sender, we just send back an empty page. So return http response of blank. Alright, save this file. Let's check it out if this works. So I refresh the page, I add a reply, are you there, send message. So we see no notification here, this is correct. In this case the sender of the last message is the logged in user. So let's switch accounts now. I go to my inbox here and I can see I have two notifications. A new message from Bobby, which I just sent, and also a message from Zozo I haven't seen yet. Now if I click now on the conversation, I would expect the icon to disappear. So let's implement that now. Let's go back to our views to py file. So when I'm clicking on this link, I'm calling the inbox view. So here we have the function. With this line we check if we are looking at a conversation. Let's get now the latest message. So it's conversation.messages.first and now I'm checking again if the conversation was not seen by everyone and the sender of the latest message is not the logged in user. If this is the case we set the conversation that is seen to true because the user is seeing this message right now and then we save the conversation. Alright, save this file and let's check it out. So I click again the inbox link. We still have our two icons here but this time if I click on Zozo the icon disappears. 
because now our is seen property is set to true. Now let's click on Bobby and it works also here. Great. Let's test with replying to Bobby. I am here and switch accounts. I click the inbox link, but as we see, we don't see an icon here. So what's going on? As you might have guessed, we still have to set the conversation that is seen to false when a user writes a new message or reply. So let's do that now. So when we create a new message, so before we save the conversation, we have to set the is seen property to false, meaning not all the participants in this conversation have seen this new message. So C dot is seen equals false. And the same goes for our reply function. So new reply, and before we save the conversation, we say conversation dot is seen equals false. Okay, save this file and let's check it out. Let's reply to Andreas here. Me too. Send a message. Switch accounts. I go back to the inbox and I can see I have a new message. Now let's test with the new message button up here. I reply to Bobby and say, brilliant. Submit the message, switch accounts. Again, go back to the inbox. And now the icon appeared. Nice. Now it runs like a fine-tuned machine. Like a fine-tuned machine. Let's add another notification alert to the site, this time to our inbox link in the header. So let's go to the header.html file. We have this in templates, includes, header.html. Here we have our inbox link. So in this li here, I add my wrapper. So diff. And I will position it absolute. So class absolute. And the icon should be top dash two and right dash zero. And for the absolute to work properly, I have to assign the relative class to the parent container. So class relative. Okay. Now let's add the HDMX. So here the logic is a bit different, so we create a new function and a new path. Then the trigger is again load. We target this element and we swap the inner HTML. Okay, save this file. Let's add the path. And we create the notify underscore inbox function. Here is my function. So let's get first my conversations. And here I'm applying two filters. So first I have to be a participant in this conversation. And also the is seen property has to be false. And then I can loop through these conversations. So for C in my conversations, I retrieve now the latest message, which again, it will be the first item in the list. Now I check who the sender is of this latest message. So if the sender of the latest message is not the logged in user, I send back the icon like that. And then I also add a default response, which is just a blank page. Okay, save this file. Now let's check it out. 
Let's go back to my inbox. Let's reply to Bobby. Me again. Send the message. Switch accounts. Here again, back to the inbox. And I can see I have a notification alert. Great. So let's reply back to Andreas. Now the alert is gone in both locations. And I reply, OK then. Laters. And send message. Switch accounts. I click home here. And I see I have a new message from Bobby. OK. Now our site is featuring also notifications. Great. So this is all for today. Thank you for watching. In the next and final video of this series, we will implement encryption to the site, so the messages we send within the inbox are truly private. And not even the admin in the admin panel has access to its content. I will see you in the next one. Until then, happy coding! <laughs>